Hey, Peter. Hi, go. <clears throat> How you doing? I'm oh, good. Good. Finally getting some good weather out here. Really? Where, where are you, Gil? Are you in, in this one? I'm up in this one. Yeah, I'm up in this one. Okay. You're coming in uh, really good. Good. <clears throat> good picture. Yeah. Better than I had on this morning Zoom. You had, another, you had another meeting this morning? Yeah, the uh, Lakes Area Food Shelf. They, oh. both, they both meet the same day. You're a popular guy. Yeah. That's into my golf time, Gil. So the weather is pretty good for golf? Oh, yeah. Uh, we hit 82 yesterday. Today hmm. it's 75. Kind of cloudy, but uh, the air in the car finally kicked on yesterday. Really? Not put the, not put the air on in the house, but not needing not needing the furnace furnace anymore either. So, might save a buck this month. We well, better enjoy it because it's going to get hot in about a month. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think today's meeting is the first one we get paid for, Gil. Oh, really? I think they're going to start paying us 30 bucks. Or Let's start this meeting so we don't have to go into that topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting a raise, Gil. Really? <laughs> a call to order uh, the public works meeting for February 3rd, 2021. Um, uh, the first item I have on the agenda, I um, was looking for, I don't know if Tom made it. I don't see him. Yeah, I don't see him here yet. Let's see, but looks, Galen? Yes. Um, we have two possible new committee members um, with us is, is Galen Strovers. He's not on the agenda because I got his application today, but I asked him to attend, uh, believing that we would be talking to uh, Tom McCauley, who also filled out an application that I did forward to you um as another possible member and so i just wanted to do an introduction and see if you had any questions based on um unfortunately you're all by zoom and i have application copies here for you so uh, i apologize that i don't have that electronically uh, well share. we we got the application for tom mccauley yes you you wouldn't have for Gay, galen 
So right. maybe I should just have him step up to the mic and introduce himself a little bit, maybe go through the high points of his application here. Um, Where is the camera at? I don't know. Behind you. Oh. Okay. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, my name is. Uh, What's that? It's on. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Galen Strovers, um, and I did apply for the open seat. Um, I'd really like to get involved with the city in one aspect or another. And uh, with my background as an engineer, I think this would be a pretty good fit. What type of engineering uh, did, were, are you involved in? I'm an in electrical engineer. Okay. Uh, it says here that your employer was LCL Electronics. What 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 do yes. they what do they do? Uh, uh, we're a small defense contractor. Oh, um, so we make pretty much anything electronic for um, all branches of the military. Anything from printed circuit boards uh, through power distribution systems, uh, laser targeting systems, pretty much anything that the military needs. Okay, we build. So you're con you're continuing to be employed by them. Uh, Alan? Yes, sir. Okay. Are, are you able to make most of the meetings here once, what, once a month? Yes, that won't be a problem at all. Okay. I didn't know if you're a commuter from here to D.C. all the time or something. Nope, nope, nope. Um, okay. Our business is located in Baxter. We just have the one location, and I live 10 minutes away. Okay. So that's not a problem. My work's also quite flexible. If I need to take off time for any unscheduled meetings or to meet with people, it's not a problem. How long have you been a Nisswa resident? It'll be three years this spring. Okay. Tom, if you've got the form there, could you, you and Dylan kind of summarize how he responded to some of those different questions? I'm sorry, Peter, you broke up there for a second. What, what are you looking for? If, if you have the application for Galen, yep. would it be reasonable to ask you and or Galen to respond to some of the questions that are on that application form? Sure. Uh, he is a Nisswa resident. He lives uh, on Mission Road. Um, let's see. His, uh, on his application, he, he was, looks like he was willing to be on any of our committees, uh, but he chose public works as his number one interest. Um, <clears throat> the question is, why are you interested in being appointed to the city commission? And it says, I'm looking to give back to and serve the community of Nisswa. Um, the next question we asked was, what are the strengths or abilities you would bring to the commissioner committee? And please indicate any education any education or professional experience that would assist, in, assist you in serving the city. And he has a BS in electrical engineering from St. Cloud State University. And he's a chief engineer for LCL Electronics as he just got done describing to us. Um, see, and then, then our next question is, what are the most important issues facing our community over the next several years? What do you think the role of the commissioner committee should be in addressing those issues and Galen responds, I believe long-term planning for growth and infrastructure are the most important issues facing our community. The committees and commissions should work with the mayor and city council to come up with a plan that will work fiscally within the city's budget <clears throat> as well as accommodate the future needs of our community. Um, the next question which you hinted on Peter is attendance, are you aware of the importance of regular meeting attendance, including the time commitment involved in preparing for the meetings? And do you feel you have the time available to be an active participant? Galen responded, yes. And then it asked for comments. It's, he says, I will reserve whatever time is necessary to attend and adequately pre prepare for all meetings. And then, then it's a signature and date. Uh, so not a lot of questions. I think we're really, you know, um, <clears throat> we need the members and so anybody that seems reasonable we're <laughs> hopefully going to accept them so uh, well i sure like the idea of long-term planning and infrastructure and uh galen i think you should know that's kind of where we're going and growing right now is it's uh and tom's probably alluded to it 
trying to develop a, a longer term uh, plan for, for sewer uh, expansion or control. Sure. I, I guess we're going to hit one tonight about cutting the road through by uh, um, uh, down there towards uh, Wendy's. Okay. Maybe should have yeah, been, Hazelwood been Drive. Planned, planned into place a few years ago. So. I don't know if you well, saw I'd, I'd be happy to, to work with you. Well, thank um, you. I'm a little scared. We got you and, and Gil, both these degreed engineer guys, and I'm just a salesman at heart. <laughs> I, I try to listen and learn and, and respect what Gil has to say. So I, I'm sure I would respect and listen to what you have to offer. Well, thank you. If you can put up with a salesman. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I think uh, I would probably make the recommendation that Galen be uh, approved by the council for this committee. Um, is there anybody that would uh, move to that uh, end? Sure, I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're a little short of members, so I think for tonight's <laughs> meeting, Mark and myself might vote just to give some weight to our decisions, if, if that's okay. And um, Galen, I, I think, Galen, we start getting paid tonight. I don't know if you qualify tonight. <laughs> well, he hasn't been accepted by the council, so You're right. pay, yeah. pays marginal. Mm -hmm. I don't hey, remember if the council accepted Peter yet either, so we may have to go back and re-examine that. <laughs> well, I've been hammering for a token uh, financial acknowledgement for a couple of years now, Gail, and I, and I think tonight we get it. Oh, funny. Gail and I, get well, it. I, I thought we old guys were sort of exempt from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Add this to your 1099. <laughs> well. All right. Well, we'll um, present this to the city council then for their final approval. And then hopefully, Gail, you can be sitting up here with us next month if that works for you. Thank you. That would be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck, Alan. Thank you. Um, Tom McCauley, Mark and I interviewed him mm -hmm. and uh, we feel he'd be also an excellent fit. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, had a chance to re review his application. Um, he seems like he'd be a good fit for our committee. He was with the, with the city of New Ulm as a, uh, mm -hmm. I believe it was um, assistant city manager, I believe was his title. Yeah, and, that's uh, exciting. I think he's going to have some insight into some of the things we're going to talk about tonight. I was actually hoping he might be here to pick up on some of that with, with Hazelwood and um, the Smiley Road intersection. Um, he might have some insight onto that, having worked for a larger city that uh, maybe a few of us here don't have. So I think he'll be a good fit and he'll round us out a little bit because like you said, Peter, we're a little heavy on engineering these days, so it'd be nice to have some other opinions in, in the mix. So. <laughs> Joe, you don't count because you're not a part of the committee. <laughs> well, you're in. I don't think Gil's real heavy. <laughs> Keep uh, talking. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to our next agenda item, an open forum. I assume there's nobody here for open forum. Uh, and, Nobody present has an open foreign forum is issue. Hearing nothing, I'll move on to our first agenda item, which is the 371 Smiley Road intersection near Subway. Now I've invited Jim Hallgren with MnDOT. He's attending the meeting by a phone call uh, to offer his insight and, and probably present what our options might be for that intersection. Uh, if you saw included in your packet, we had a, uh, bear with me a second while I find the man's name. Um, we had a citizen business owner on Smiley Road, um, John Melberg, who, you know, he's, he's saying there's a safety issue with, with that intersection. Uh, in particular, the crossover between the north and southbound lanes. There's been some serious accidents there. Uh, he provided some pictures of those. Um, I don't know what the statistics are for that intersection. Maybe Jim has something he can offer on that end. 
Um, and with that, you know, I, I put together what I thought were a few uh, options for that, that that I'll go through as we work through here if they don't get mentioned. But um, uh, basically I see that we have three options for, for the intersection. We can change nothing, leave it as it is. Uh, we can close the median between the two, two in, uh, between the north and southbound lanes, or we can close the intersection completely. Now there might be some other options that I'm not aware of, but I think we could start the conversation there. Um, Jim, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself and tell everybody what your title with MnDOT is and how you might uh, impact this discussion. I uh, I sure can. Um, I'm uh, Jim Hallgren uh, with the Minnesota Department of Transportation. I am the uh, uh, Assistant District Engineer in charge of program delivery uh, for District 3, uh, which is comprised of uh, the central part of the state from uh, basically from uh, Elk River uh, up, to, uh, up to Hackensack. Um, and then on the um, easterly border, uh, Cambridge, um, to our westerly border of um, Bruton, Belgrade, um, that area. So we're, we're uh, pretty much the uh, central part of the state. Um, uh, so um, give you some more background on myself. I, uh, I was a project manager uh, with the uh, Department of Transportation until I uh, uh, took a promotion here a couple years ago, um, developing um, projects uh, for uh, uh, for future construction, um, uh, worked on the uh, Highway uh, 371 project from Niswa up to uh, uh, up to Jenkins here uh, a few years ago. Um, uh, several other projects around the area. Uh, the uh, um, project in uh, downtown uh, Brainerd on uh, Highway uh, 371B, as well as uh, started off some of our uh, larger projects uh, that we currently got going on in Elk River. Uh, uh, conversion of a uh, of the uh, expressway to a freeway standard, uh, removing all the signals uh, through Elk River on Highway 169, uh, removing those five signals and uh, replacing them with grade separated interchanges. So uh, that's come kind of some of the background of myself here. Uh, normally, I would bring my traffic engineer with me. Unfortunately, um, he is uh, he came down with COVID. Uh, so he is unable to attend right now. Um, uh, so some of the statistical information as far as crashes, I'm probably going to be a little bit weak on, uh, but I do have some information um, available to me. Um, but he would be a much better resource to explain it in more detail than I could. So with that as kind of my background, um, uh, Tom, uh, do you want to uh, kind of walk us through? Um, where you want uh, this discussion to go. I'm, I'm sorry, Jim, I... Oh, I, okay, very good. Um, so I think, you know, addressing um, a John Melberg's uh, uh, concerns here. Um, I don't know if you saw his uh, email to Jenny and our fire chief, Sean Bailey, Jim, but uh, he points out that he's a local business owner um, near Subway in that same building. And he's seen accident after accident. Uh, he sees it as a dangerous intersection that cuts across from Smiley to 371. <clears throat> and uh, he says, I have nearly been hit a few times at that crossing. An employee has had a total vehicle from the intersection and, and then he, the pictures that he had of this serious accident with the helicopter he provided and that was the day he sent this email. And so he's, he's saying that this intersection has to go, it's dangerous. Um, <clears throat> so, what, and then he goes on to say, not just to those that choose to use it instead of going to the stoplights, but drivers like myself to take the left on the service road to bypass it, to make use of the stoplights. Oftentimes I see people race across to avoid oncoming traffic and then others and myself included are at the risk of speeding cars getting across. And he says, I don't know where to start with my complaint and request to eliminate the intersection. It's causing accidents, risk, risk to life 
and stops traffic when incidents occur. To make matters worse, Domino's has a delivery service going in and out of that intersection nonstop all day, making it an even greater risk. He said, says, please find me, please help me find a way to address this. <clears throat> so I guess what I'd like to know, Jim, having read that and my thoughts on it, I don't think doing nothing is an option. I think whether it's uh, members of this committee or the city council may have to weigh in on this, whether they, pref whether they would prefer to uh, either partially close the intersection by closing the median, or if they would like to see the intersection completely closed. Um, probably the input I would be looking from you, Jim, is what's the process for doing either one of those two options? Uh, uh, I think it starts with a discussion, just like what we're having here. Um, um, you know, we would, we would pull the crash data. Um, I don't know if I can share the information that I have with you. Um, uh, let me try to share my screen. Boy, if you're successful, teach me how. <laughs> I just keep hitting buttons until yeah. something pops up. Um, well, don't can you cut see yourself my off. <laughs> can you see my screen? Not yet. No. Okay. I see hall one jam. <clears throat> okay. It might not work. I might not have access uh, to your facilities. Bad. So, um, okay. Uh, so, um, with the crash data that we pulled, we pulled a, a five-year crash uh, uh, crash analysis uh, for this from uh, August to 2015 to August to 2020. Um, we we're showing that we only had four crashes at this uh, at this intersection. Um, three of the four were right angle, uh, so those are those are the ones that uh, become concerning to us because of the uh, they have the potential of being quite severe. Um, fortunately, we have not had any fatals, uh, fatal crashes in that um, five-year window. Uh, there was one severe um, incapacitating injury crash. So uh, we use that information to kind of give us a, a comparison uh, between uh, this intersection to compared to other intersections that are uh, worse, let's call it. Um, in this instance, um, we are, uh, I think we are um, just above the um, statewide average, but we're not at that critical crash rate yet. Uh, so it's, it's, it's one that is, something that we would want to keep an eye on, uh, continue to observe, um, might not want to take immediate action um, right now because of, um, because there are consequences uh, when we, when we do something uh, that extreme to close the intersection, close the median, it's going to push, uh, uh, push traffic to other locations that may not be, uh, that may not be set up for it, let's say. Um, going through this area in the in the past when we have closed median crossovers, it does get rather controversial. Uh, so you, you need to be need to be aware of that. Um, a project that we had just a few years ago, uh, we did close one of the median crossovers um, uh, right across from Nisswa Marine, uh, and then we also closed one up at uh, uh, Clark Lake Road. Uh, both of which got uh, uh, a little bit controversial. So uh, just be aware of that as well. Um, as far as the, the process, uh, we could handle it a few different ways here, um, um, all of which we, I, would, I would like, you know, some support from the city uh, here in a form of a letter or something to that effect. Uh, whatever the city would choose to uh, um, provide us. Um, uh, so I think it would it would start with a you know a letter asking us to consider um, you know the closure of the median um, or uh, closure of the complete intersection um, would be 
or or even just a, a further analysis, further investigation, um, uh, looking at you know any and all options. Um, if uh, if we did something like that, we could move into a uh, a uh, access management study um, where where we would uh, start uh, several look at several different alternatives. Um, you know, um, connecting up the service ro service drives on either end. Um, uh, converting the intersection at this location to uh, a new location uh, with a, a uh, what we would call a reduced conflict intersection, uh, similar to what we have up in uh, up in Pequot Lakes at the at the south end of the bypass and the north end of the bypass, where uh, where drivers are restricted from shooting straight across, uh, mm -hmm. where drivers have to take a right turn and merge into the left turn lane and make a U-turn to come back around. Uh, we're, we're seeing um, uh, real good uh, safety benefits uh, from that type of intersection. Um, here at this instance, uh, because you're, you're in the curve, uh, we would probably want to change the location further to the north, to try to split the difference between um, the two signals. So, so there is a possibility there as well. Um, how to get from where we're at to a point like that. Um, I believe that it would, we would need to start with a study, start with uh, a more mm. investigation, get more public input. Um, uh, when we, uh, uh, my experience has been when we when we work in a in a small box uh, without getting that public in, input, it does not work out well for us. Uh, so I, I think that uh, public engagement aspect of it will be critical in a situation like this. Um, I don't want to I don't want to you know work in a vacuum here. Um, how to initiate it? We could initiate it as a as a standalone. Um, one thing that I'm eyeing here is uh, MnDOT is going to have work on Highway 371 from Baxter up to Nisswa. We have a uh, what we call a reclamation uh, project where we're um, um, uh, doing a, a thicker uh, pavement. We are milling off the existing surface, uh, mixing the uh, bituminous surfacing into the grade, and then doing an overlay over the top of it. It's a little bit more extensive than our simple mill and overlay type projects, but uh, there might be an opportunity there where with an eye toward that future project, we would want to look at, you know, what is, what is the plan for access along the entire corridor? When is that? Um, that Sorry, project bro. is currently scheduled for the 2027 to 2029 kind of time frame. So probably a little bit outside the window that you would like it to be, but it would be, um, it would be something where, you know, we would, we could incorporate it into the MnDOT project on our dime, um, on MnDOT's dime, so to speak. So um, there would be a definitely a benefit to something like that. Um, another option that the city uh, may want to consider would be um, uh, what we would do, uh, what we call a, a local initiative project where um, we could um, uh, look at just more of an isolated area, um, now let's say between the two signals here. And, uh, you know, uh, what, what would we want to do for service roads and access? Access in that you know smaller type project. Um, if we have funds available, um, MnDOT could commit funds to a project of that nature. Uh, where what we've done in the past is, uh, if the city is willing to do the uh, pay, do and perform and pay for the engineering and acquire any right away needed. MnDOT can participate up to the amount of um, access that gets closed through this area. So there, there might be an opportunity like that here again. Um, it, it would be you know, under the city's leadership. So the city would have more control of that. Um, I would have to you know, verify the, this with our state aid engineer and his, the funds that he may have available. So 
there might be an opportunity to work together on a effort like that as well. So those are just some of the options that I'm seeing here just off the top of my head. Um, so I don't know if, uh, if uh, you guys would have uh, any questions uh, related to any of those things that I described. Is, is putting in a, another four-way traffic light there um, realistic to consider as an option? Um, short answer is no, not really. Um, uh, it would be, we would, we would look at our warrants um, and our spacing. Um, neither of which would, uh, would uh, really raise to the top of warranting a signal um, here. Uh, the, uh, the main issue here is the, the cross street volumes just are just not high enough where it would, uh, it would trigger a warrant to install a signal at a situation like that. And the spacing between uh, the signal to the south in this location is, is pretty much too close. Uh, we would not, uh, it, it would, we would create more problems um, with closely spaced signals. I'm sure that you've seen the uh, signal down here at uh, uh, 210, 371, and then the next one up at Excelsior um, uh, by uh, Mills Fleet Farm. Those two do not function well together. We are constantly having uh, problems with the operation of uh, those two closely spaced signals. So I, I definitely would not uh, want to recommend uh, uh, repeating um, repeating a situation like that. When you mentioned crap data, uh, five years and so on, it, it occurred to me that between Baxter and Nisswa, there are several um, cro cross cross point spots, and I'm just uh, you know like down by Acorn. Uh, it seems to me you can go all the way across uh, from either direction. Same with uh, that Landsberg Nursery. Um, would your crash data in, in our spot be compared to the crash data in some of those other ones? And would be would that be a valid comparison? Um, yeah, that would be uh, that would be a good comparison. Uh, looking elsewhere along this corridor, unfortunately, okay. I didn't uh, I didn't pull that information uh, or have our traffic engineer pull <laughs> that information just sure. for comparison purposes. Um, I can uh, request that information out of them. So you can have, have uh, it all help give you some sort of comparison um, on how, how big of a problem that we're dealing with compared to other uh, known areas along the corridor. Um, so it might take us a little bit of time to pull that information together, but I will uh, make a note of that to uh, um, So uh, Johnson Road, uh, you indicated, uh, at Landsberg, and then um, uh, uh, what was the other one? I'm sorry. Well, I, th I think it's around Acorn Nursery. Okay. Um, uh, um, you know, yeah, a, a real it? critical one is there's a, a, a gas station. Um, help me out, guys. There's a, a restaurant now that's doing quite Green well. You mean Green. A Gold Dam Road? I think that is the name of it, Gold Dam Road. And I yeah. believe. There's no light there, and that goes straight across. That, that's not yes. Um, that is that is a very bad one, uh, yeah. and we actually have a we actually have a project uh, scheduled to be constructed here within the next two or three years. I think it's in. Um, can't remember if it's in 2022 or 2023. Uh, we will be converting that uh, Goldam Road intersection as well as Green Gables Road. Uh, for the to the north up by um, oh boy uh, what's the uh, bar and restaurant up there um, Cowboys I think it's now called the old the old Ivans up there yeah, yeah. that yeah. intersection Cowboys. just Cowboys south north. there yep yep no um, we will be converting those intersections <clears throat> to uh, reduce conflict intersections all the way through that area including the intersection at the entry to Brandon International Raceway. Um, so um, uh, Luke Wessler is one of my project managers that has been um, uh, leading that effort. Um, so it's, uh, it's been going uh, fairly well. 
Uh, so um, he has done uh, quite a bit of outreach uh, to the uh, um, local businesses in the area, and um, he hasn't been shot yet. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I look at that as 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 a success, uh, given the given the nature of that area and the potential for conflict. Um, How will you reduce them? Uh, we will be doing uh, similar to uh, what we call reduced conflict intersections, similar to what we uh, did at the south end and north end of the uh, um, Pequot Lakes bypass. Uh, uh, the, those type of intersections where uh, you uh, can't shoot straight across, you will have to be redirected you know, 500 feet north or south of the intersection and make that U-turn maneuver. Um, we'll also be uh, closing several accesses in that area and uh, 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 fixing up the frontage roads on both sides. So um, I think it'll be a vast improvement over what we're currently experiencing through there. Uh, Jim, another alternative which uh, could be used in conjunction with those ones that you are stating or perhaps by itself, would be just to put in a speed limit, like say 45 miles an hour. And I'm not talking about all the way through Nisswa, but from hole in the day, well, even from Round Lake up to Nisswa, the traffic has gotten so heavy and uh, dangerous, quite dangerous to pedestrians on those two crossings. Uh, just slowing everybody down to say 45 miles an hour might make a big difference at this corner. I know I live in the area and I've taken it many times and it's a dangerous corner right now, but people are going 60, 70 miles an hour when they go by there and it's hard to get across or get into the traffic flow. I, I hear exactly what you're saying and I've experienced that myself. With the speed limits, though, the compliance is hard to achieve. Um, uh, when we artificially uh, have a speed limit set too low, um, uh, it just uh, creates more problems uh, than what people are, if we set it with what people are comfortable driving. Uh, in this instance, uh, uh, the speed limit set at 60, uh, we get better compliance and um, uh, uh, it, uh, it's, yeah, we just get better compliance and um, uh, less, less conflicts that way. So um, I would well, have that concern of artificially uh, posting it slower than people are comfortable driving. Well, it would have to be enforced, but uh, you know, that was constructed back, I think almost uh, 55, 60 years ago when the traffic between Nisswa and Brainerd was relatively small. And in the last 10 years, you know, it has increased exponentially. And uh, I've lived along that highway for 50 years and I can see a tremendous difference in the traffic. Uh, just because it was uh, okay to drive 60, 70 miles an hour 50 years ago, doesn't mean that it still holds true today. You know, that's not, a, that's not a limited access road. Uh, one day I counted the uh, entrances and exits on that road in the six and a half miles through Nisswa. And I think there were somewhere between 60 and 70 points of access to that road. Now that's a lot of congestion, potential congestion. And people drive at 60, 70 miles an hour, like you say, and I'm not saying they should drive that all the way from Brainerd, but through Nisswa, which has changed dramatically in the last 10 years, I think that uh, there should be a reduced speed limit that should be enforced. And if you had signs up there saying it's being enforced, it would make a difference too. You know, just sticking a sign up there all of a sudden that says 45 degrees, excuse me, miles per hour, uh, it, nobody's gonna pay much attention to it unless it's enforced. I think it would make a significant difference at this intersection that we are discussing without even doing a lot of these other things. And, you know, it's enforcement is a huge element that we would we would have to be uh, aware of to be able to get compliance. Um, we have a police force. It, 
Yeah, you, you have oh, a police force. There's a county sheriff and the highway patrol as well. Um, another another argument why it isn't currently posted at that lower speed limit is by statute we are required to uh, do a speed study, do a speed analysis, um, and post it according to the 85th percentile. Um, and uh, in this instance, that is uh, 60 miles an hour through this area. Whose so uh, is we have, that's the state statute. Um, I don't have this statute um, that we would have to comply with. Um, right at my fingertips, I can, um, um, I can get that uh, and send an email back to Tom on that so he can distribute it to you. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. I, I just don't have it at my fingertips. This would be something that I would have to lean on my traffic engineer who, uh, who is uh, incapacitated at this point. Um, so I will get you that statute number um, and uh, share that with Tom so he can distribute Distribute that to you guys. Any closure of this uh, intersection, like the crossing and so forth, is going to push a lot more traffic onto Hazelwood Drive, and people will have to go all the way to up to Niswa. That's the only way they'll be able to get onto Hazelwood Drive. And especially now, if we move our garbage collection in the future to uh, the treatment plant site. And with all the building that's going on around the pines, uh, lower Roy Lake Road is going to have more and more traffic. And if that is, if this corner is closed, you know, it's going to really mess up the traffic on some of those streets. It definitely has that potential, sir. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that's why I would, I would offer caution that additional analysis would be uh, would be necessary. Um, so somebody can't point at you and say, you know, what were you thinking? What was it? What was men not thinking here? Um, you know, by by this simple closure, it's created more problems elsewhere along the corridor. So I, I, I agree with you here that I think this is a situation where we'd want to go into this eyes wide open we would want a, a additional um, supporting documentation before we make any any hard and fast decisions. Well, the rumor around this law for years has been that it's a political decision made down there in St. Paul. The speed limit. Uh, the speed limit, no. Uh, that is uh, set by the state statute, which uh, we would do a speed analysis and um, uh, we would set it according to, you know, what the majority of people are uh, comfortable driving it at, uh, which we use the 85th percentile. But um, who set the, stat the statute to start with? That would be the legislature. Right. That's the Political legislature. Decision. They don't want to uh, be slowed down on their way up to Walker or points north. Okay. Um, Jim, quick question. <clears throat> The that median, um, it's not really big enough for a, you know a respite area between the north and southbound lanes, as it is today. Do you think that there's any chance that, that could be made wider so a, tr a car a truck could actually sit in there waiting for traffic to clear, or is that is it just too tight? Yeah, I would say it's it's just too tight um, to change the alignment of the northbound and southbound lanes uh you would it would create a lot more impacts to um yeah. you know um uh the out, outside edges of that roadway uh and it would uh, it would it would be quite the undertaking okay to accomplish that tom isn't there also a, a trail crossing there yeah the snowmobile trail does cross there um it, it, thank God uh, we haven't had any serious in injuries there because, you know, that's children. You know, a lot of, a lot of the operators of snowmobiles are, are kids. Um, and, you know, given the, the close calls and accidents we have had there, I, I'm surprised that we haven't had a serious accident with a snowmobile there. Um, 
I don't know how we would, you know, maybe Jim has some insight into that too. If we ever do modify that intersection, how to more uh, safely get the snowmobile trail across there, or if that's even possible to make any change to that, or maybe we would have to move it to a different intersection down by the light or up further. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, not sure what would be the best option there. Do you, do you have any insight into that, Jim? Of what what would uh, what could be done with the, the snowmobile trail at that intersection? Um, this would be something that I would want to pull a, a trail expert into. I know uh, I've dealt with Wade Miller in the past with the DNR, um, picking his brain on um, um, suitable trail crossings. Um, I worked with him up in the um, up at the Apine intersection with a, uh, a trail crossing uh, issues up there. Uh, so this would be something where I would I would like to lean on him a little bit more, okay. if uh, you know, depending on which way which way the city would like this uh, to be pursued. I have two two questions now that you're on to trails and tunnels. Um, were, were you involved with the tunnel design and development under 371 there in this one? In the second, uh, yeah, yes, yes, I was. Second part of the question, um, I don't use it yet because I don't have any reason to. But can snowmobiles use that, or are there steps on one side? The, the snowmobiles would not be able to use it um, because of on the on the downtown Nisswa side. Let's say yeah. uh, just that, uh, just the way that that was developed. Okay. Uh, just for your information, Peter, that was a city decision not to use that as a snowmobile crossing. Okay. You know, Jim, there's one other question that I had. Uh, um, this was, uh, you mentioned something about um, right of way access. If we were where the city uh, could be in combination, uh, would be able to work on something. Uh, can you explain that a little bit more? I didn't get that. Okay, so um, under a local initiative uh, project, um, we would. Uh, uh, we would enter into an agreement with the city of Nisswa, uh, whereby the uh, city would hire an engineer to develop a uh, uh, an access uh, access uh, uh, plan. Basically, uh, the city would um, hire a consultant um, at the city's expense, and then any resulting um, uh, right of way acquisition activities would also be at the city's expense where if the city's um, uh, extending the frontage roads um, and uh, needs to um, uh, purchase property, uh, that would be at the city's expense uh, for that right away acquisition. Um, MnDOT would participate in the uh, construction of that project up to 100%. Uh, which would be based off of the uh, the amount of access that gets closed. So, for instance, if all access is closed between the two signals, uh, MnDOT would uh, participate in a uh, hundred percent of the construction um, uh, cost for a, a project of that nature. Uh, I hope that did that answer your question. Yeah, so that would be something like a back road or something, or, or a frontage road. A backage road, frontage road. Yeah, uh, we did road something road. similar with uh, City of Baxter, um, uh, where um, oh, through that whole area by the uh, uh, by the Holiday Inn Express, um, that that backage road, frontage road uh, system there was uh, was a uh, local initiative project with between MnDOT and the uh, City of Baxter. Hmm. Oh, additional follow-up would be necessary um, uh, for something like that. Um, you know, time uh, time has changed, and MnDOT's cost participation policy has uh, evolved. Um, so I would have to do some double checking uh, if uh, if the city's interested in something like that. I can um, um, get you more information uh, for a local initiative project like that. 
So we'd have to hire an engineer to do that and then to purchase the property. And you mentioned one other thing? Um, it would just uh, pay for the engineering and the uh, right-of-way acquisition. I, okay, I think right are, the two big, are, are the two big ones. Okay, so then from there, um, the uh, up to if there is enough uh, side roads, you know, uh, eliminated access eliminated, then it could be up to 100% of the cost of uh, building that access or that road. The back yep, road. of the of the service roads. Yes, of the service road. Does the service road have to be on your right of way? No, it would be on the. Uh, on the newly acquired right away or existing right away um, that uh, the city already has. Okay. So you could uh, you could do a develop a backage road system or a frontage road system. Um, however, however the uh, um, the the city chooses to do that. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Um, it, it, I know it's uh, another portion of the agenda, but help me understand if this man builds three buildings, are they over there on Hazelwood, which would add more traffic to this intersection under discussion? Uh, I didn't quite follow that, Peter. What, what did you say? Yeah. Okay, we have another. Halls. Oh, Lands. okay. Yeah, I, Joel Hall, the, the next item on our agenda, is that what you're referring to, Peter? Uh, yes, I don't quite know where those buildings would go, but you're talking about a, a back road, I guess, behind Bolberg's, perhaps. And I'm just wondering if those three buildings, assuming they're going to be commercial, would they be bringing more traffic to this uh, the, uh, intersection that's under discussion so far today? Almost certainly. Okay. So I, I don't know how, uh, Mr. Hall, you factor that in, but it looks like there's some growth coming. And, and as well as what uh, my colleague G uh, Gill mentioned, if we move the, the dump site to the waste sanitation area, we could have even more traffic. That's um, all true. But those are futures. They're not, they're not in the mix today all true okay i guess tom i'd like to ask jim um jim i did you know going way back to don anderson and years i mean is there actually a file or it's not at mindot kind of with an unofficial position on the hazelwood drive access at that point uh, you know I mean, was, is there a file that says, well, you know, if this ever gets brought up, yeah, we'd like to work with this one trying to close that or, you know, how rumors can be said so many times then they become facts, even when that's all they ever were, were rumors. So, okay. Um, uh, we do have a, uh, uh, a 2001 access management study uh, that was performed uh, from between Baxter and Niswa. That's um, getting a, a little bit dated uh, and would need to be refreshed. So uh, there is there is that element um, uh, that that is available. Um, I think there was also um, there are previous discussions uh, between myself, um, Don Anderson, uh, Tom, I think you were part of those discussions uh, where we laid out, um, you know, some of these ideas of a, uh, uh, a local initiative um, uh, project. Uh, but it never, it never gained momentum um, after that. Uh, yeah. So, and those were just more in the discussion, uh, early, early discussions, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the limit that we would have. No, thank you, Jim. That's what, you know, yeah, there was a study back in 2000, it's that old, it's 20 years old now, but that's what I was referring to. I, I would just remember there was something that, you know, people commented about, you know, but it wasn't just Niswa, it was, they say Baxter to Niswa. Yep, thank yep. you. Yep. <clears throat> Anybody yeah, else? My, my apologies. I thought you were Mr. Hall. I'm a little confused. I see a Marcy's iPad and a Hall Jam, and I haven't figured out who is who. So my apologies, yeah. No, I'm I'm sorry about that. That's my uh, that's my login ID. 
for my uh, my computer for the state network. It's uh, okay. yeah, James who Holgren is, is. Yeah, who is Marcy's iPad? Who, who is that gentleman? Uh, that's me, Tom McCauley. Oh, there we go. I don't know what happened, but I was sitting here for half an hour, and all the, all of a sudden, I got put on. <laughs> okay. Well, well, welcome. Thank you. Tom is uh, looking to join our committee. I, I mentioned that at the beginning of the meeting, Tom, before you were able to join. So um, uh, I guess uh, we'll come back to you, Tom, and try to give you a more proper introduction after we're done with uh, this item on the agenda, if that's okay. That's fine, yeah, that's fine. Any other comments regarding this intersection discussion? I think what we're gonna to need to do is have more discussion among ourselves about what we want to do with the, with the intersection given the information Jim's given us so far. Um, does anybody else have a different opinion on that as far as uh, maybe we need to table this and have some more discussion uh, on this I, and maybe come I, back to I, it? I, I, this is Peter, I would be in favor of, of our committee um, going forward with a recommendation to city council that they issue a letter to MnDOT, if, if I understood Jim's comments correctly, to get this thing moving. I think one thing that would I would I would want to reserve that for now, Peter, is if you look at the next item on our agenda is the Hazelwood Drive. We're talking about one of these backage roads that Jim brought up. Um, and the, the closure or maybe closure of this intersection might affect that project too. And I think as a city, we need to figure out what we would like to do with that before we write the letter. I, I think I'm not against your idea of the city needs, needs to take a position and, and then uh, write a letter to MnDOT. I don't know if we're ready to do that yet. Uh, Mark, are you representing the city on our committee now? Yes. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on this? Am I putting you on the spot? Well, no, I, I was thinking that we should discuss about this uh, Joe Hall project first before we make a formal okay. recommendation. Right. Yeah. Well, well welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Tom, you know, I'd offer too, MnDOT will be much more appreciative if NISWA comes in with a better defined package rather than just a, do this letter and you right. know, they, they, it's time and money for them too. So I, I, I think you nailed the nail on the head here. The city needs to look at Hazelwood Drive and have a more uh, encompassing package that they would go to MnDOT. That, that'll get, MnDOT will like that much better and be able to okay. respond hopefully a little more favorably back. Okay. You know, I do think something needs to be done with the intersection I, I, as soon as it can. Um, that, that, that's my position on it. Um, I do wanna think it through. It's been a danger for a while. If it goes a little longer, uh, you know, God forbid something bad would happen, but I do think it would be better for us to think this through a little bit before we uh, make a request to MnDOT. So, um, with that, if no one else has any um, comments or questions for Jim, um, I don't know if we, I don't know if it's necessary for him to stay for the rest of our agenda. Uh, I think he's kind of answered the questions I might have had myself for the next item. I, I don't, Mark would would. It, do you think it would be beneficial for Jim to hang on for, for that or? Well, Jim, I'll just ask from the mid out here, who is the primary person with respect to right of way that, cause that, that's be one of the questions the city comes back on that little triangle shape that sits there. Who, who, who would we contact at MnDOT with that question? Uh, the, our right of way engineer, our district right of way engineer is Kevin Schmidt. Um, okay. So I can put you in contact with him, um, or if you want, I think you, uh, Tom or somebody might have his uh, contact information. If you can't find his contact information, please feel free to email me, and I can uh, get uh, Kevin in contact with you as well. Yep. No, thank you. We have his contact. I just wanted to okay. uh, make sure you know not go to Rich Munch or somebody else, and and just you know, so thank you for the name. That's what we'll work with. Okay. Um, Tom, are we officially asking uh, Jim Hogren to get us more um, crash data on some of the similar 
crossroads down there that we, that we talked about earlier? Is, is that got some, some comparative value for us? And is that a reasonable request, Tom, at this time? Oh, I think, yeah, we can, no harm in that, yeah. Any problem with that, Jim? I mean, you, you wouldn't have any problem providing that? Oh, yes, absolutely. We can get you that information. I've uh, made a note um, uh, to talk to my staff. Um, uh, with uh, with uh, uh, my traffic engineering uh, traffic engineer being down for a little bit, it might take us um, a little bit of time to uh, pull the information. Uh, but yes, I will definitely get you that information, um, as well as the uh, state statute number uh, regarding the uh, 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 speed limits. Okay. Well, with that, I'll. Um... Thank you, Jim, for uh, joining our meeting tonight. And um, I'll look for the information coming from you and I'll be in touch if there's any further questions that come up after you're gone. Okay, that would be great. And yeah, uh, like, like I said, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll uh, uh, you know, uh, get you the information that you're needing. So thank you everyone, appreciate it. Thank yeah, you, Jim. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Our next item on our agenda is the Hazelwood Drive uh, potential extension to 77 and, um, and the Joe Hall project that, that's underway there. Um, as I stated in the agenda, Joe Hall has purchased property on the south end of Hazelwood Drive and he will be building a couple of buildings that uh, I think I included a survey that shows uh, the where he plans to locate those. Um, and he intends to rent those buildings to two tenants. Um, his project has caused us to relook at uh, an older project that's been discussed many times with many different committees and councils here, and that's extending Hazelwood Drive south to um, County Road 77 near Wendy's. Um, I provided you guys a map showing the parcels along the way and then also hanging on the wall here, um, we have a concept map uh, back from 2007 um, that shows approximately where uh, Hazelwood would, uh, how it would be routed through from its current end on the, uh, near Joe Hall's project all the way over towards uh, where Wendy's is on County 77. Um, I guess the, the first thing that jumps out to me was uh, carrying over from our previous item with Jim was it was interesting to hear that MnDOT would uh, participate in our costs to, to construct that road. That that definitely makes that more um, interesting. Um, I guess my first question would be, uh, is everybody familiar with what we're talking about as far as extending um, Hazelwood to that intersection? Uh, Tom? Yes. Uh, that's why I asked him that question about right away. Are you sure they would participate if we went uh, behind Wendy's there or was he talking about a service road adjacent to their right of way? He did say frontage and backage roads, and this what I believe would qualify. Yeah, the front and the back roads. Yeah. As he said, similar to Baxter. Yeah, they'll. You see, their program it hasn't changed. They'll participate in the cost. Just the local unit of government is responsible for all the property acquisitions. They they're not interested in paying large dollars for property, so that's kind of their. That, that, you know, that's all I say they worked with Dutch Cragen when he developed, you know, uh, the uh, uh, Holiday Inn Express that he brought up. So, but, but yes, whether it's a frontage road or backage road, uh, within reason, it can't be a backage road a mile and a half away. Just, <laughs> that would be a big, big plus to that. Yeah, my understanding we is. Still have, we still have the problem with that intersection on 371. Uh, just looking at this tonight, Another option, I don't know how feasible it is, would be to run this, this road we're talking about now straight north all the way to Roy Lake Road 
I don't know where that comes out. I would guess around where Leonard Lanz's farm buildings used to be, but that would make an access to that area for people if you closed completely closed off this bad intersection we're talking about. And it would be a, you know it'd be a turning at County 77 and probably going through a roundabout and heading north. It might be an option. Yeah, if ever, I don't know how many of you were um, around when the county was doing their work for the intersection that they just did this past summer. Um, when the, the planning for that project first began, they had shown a plan uh, that had a roundabout at that Wendy's intersection roughly uh, in line with the, um, what we just named Hazelwood South going past the water slide and uh, going into the, what was the old airport property. Um, they also had another roundabout on the east side uh, where they anticipate another backage road would go in behind uh, Schaefer's and, in, and behind uh, American National Bank. So um, yeah, I, I I think they're aware of, of of those of the need of that, and I and I think that's what they're anticipating, just given those plans that were shown earlier. Yeah, I guess for the city, if Hazelwood Drive ever does connect to 77 across from uh, Hazelwood South, yes, it's I mean it's a part of that whole package with MnDOT and then with the county is the entrance to Wendy's is gonna come over into Hazelwood Drive and there's gonna be one intersection there. They're not gonna have an intersection and then literally 150 feet away right. have the entrance to Wendy's. So and I believe that might even be been an agreement with Bob Sullivan. Okay, very cool, good time. But just, as you, if you've talked about this, that's Tim Bray in the county and MnDOT, that's, that were the discussions and their whole layouts on that. So just, so you get in the minutes so everybody's aware here that whether it's a year or two years, you know, the, you got that little piece of property in there in between Wassa Holmes, Larry Oaks, but yeah, that'll have to be worked in. Yep. This will be, uh, you know, just this, this uh, small extension of Hazelwood, if we go through with this, um, will be a good uh, exercise for the city to a template for how we might do this uh, on the other side of uh, 371, if there were ever need, if we ever put in a backage road behind Schaefer's or uh, even other utilities, if, if we needed to do that across uh, multiple um, property owners, um, trying to secure right of way and a, and a route for that. So um, th this is kind of a new, uh, new process for me. We haven't built a city maintained road um, in the entire time I've been with the city. So this will be a new process. So my, my understanding then is, um, you know, we, we have this preliminary engineer's construction cost estimate uh, in the package here. And, and it said for that road from Hazelwood to that Wausau Homes area, that it'd be $565,000 for that. And, um, and if we were to do something like that, I guess there would be up to about four accesses onto 371 that might be closed. That's true. So uh, I wonder if after that survey is done or that if they look at this, if they would actually pay for that 565,000, I guess there's a possibility he said up to 100%. It, it's definitely a possibility. And depending on the accesses that are Certainly closed. I think there'd be a significant uh, participation even if it isn't 100%. So I, I think it's right. uh, definitely worth uh, looking into and, and being aware of what that amount of participation would be before we make any kind of uh, decision or even a request to MnDOT about closing that intersection, the, even the dangerous one that we were just talking about. Yeah. Well, I then, think what we should do is uh, let's get a copy, even though it's dated their 2001 management plan, because that very well could identify all these into the mobile prop lumber yard. So that should be just information the city and your engineer should know because again, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if this, you know, we'll just call it 
from MnDOT, if they can kill three birds with one stone, that just entices their percentage. You right. Know, does it get them from 60 to 80 to 100%? Mm -hmm. So I guess taking this a little further than what I intended on our agenda, uh, I wonder how, being there's already a, a frontage road of sorts there on the Schaefer side, would MnDOT participate at all in a vacuage road that's constructed on that side? I guess that's a question I wish I'd have asked Jim while we had him here. Um, because there, there are more areas along that, I guess that busy intersection that we may want to extend either a frontage road or move the frontage road to a backage road and and uh, any participation we could get from them would be, um, may make the difference of whether that happens or not. So. I've got a question for Mark. Uh, does the alignment of that north and south, is there any problem with those two large steel buildings that were put in there last year at the north end there? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, if you're talking about the two buildings built on the, would be the west end of Commons Drive. Yeah. And no, I mean, like I say, just, you know, very tentative, you know, just uh, look that Hazelwood Drive, if Hazelwood Drive extends to the south, it'll, you know, it'll stay even actually just on, you know, on the east side of what uh, Joe Hall is proposing. And then after it's passed, you know, south of what he is proposing for development, then yet be determined how, how it, you know, divides the property up. It was, you know, but it's like, you know, it's going to work its way further to the west because it eventually has to line up, you know, with, uh, you know, once you get to 77 with the existing uh, entrance. To yeah, there were, there were two large pole, pole uh, barns built one a year, a year ago or so, Tom? Yeah, I think one, yeah, give or take. They, they aren't shown on this little map that I've got here, but. No. Uh, one of them's got to be right about where the road would go, I would think. No. No? No. no. They, they should be to the west of where, where we're showing the road to go. Really? They're to the west of that? On the Commons Drive? Yeah, they're to the west. Hmm. Yeah, they're actually west of what Joe Hall is is. Well, these two buildings I'm talking about are west of, of, of Halls, right? Say that again, Dill. <clears throat> the area that they're clearing now, these two buildings that were built last year or whenever, they are quite a ways west of his property. Yes. But yes. I think they're, one of them is right smack on that north-south property line. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, I don't know if if maps or any of those things are current enough to show those buildings or not. They're not. Um, we, Mark and I had talked about that a little bit. As, as we go along with this, we'll probably provide a more updated uh, conceptual map for this that will show um, updated property ownership and buildings. Uh, you know, even the map that we have doesn't it shows a property where Wendy's is going to be located, but it's not the actual Wendy's property. So um, that would have to be updated if we continue forward with this uh, yeah. process. But, but the road as we show it now and where I think it is likely to go would be on the east side of what Joe Hall is proposing. On, on the east side? East side, yes. Is that where they're clearing right now? Where they're clearing, it would be just east of that is where the road would go. The road would almost be right on top of the snowmobile trail there, where the snowmobile tra trail crosses Hazelwood. Yeah. I so would say it where, almost where would it go that. west? What's that? Where would it go west? Uh, it actually, it would cut across uh, from that from its existing where the snowmobile trail crosses there. Yep. If you drew a diagonal across to um, Boberg's Lumberyard, I guess it'd be just guessing from looking at the map. I would say it was about, if you drew a straight line across there, I think that's how you would see the road laid out. Hmm. Won't that kind of 
break up that area there uh, if you put a road diagonally through that? I don't know how else we could do it without making weird S curves or something at, at that uh, Commons Drive area. Um, I guess I was thinking going due west past those rental units now that are on the north side to a corner and then going due south to the Wendy's area just in a straight line so that that would open up that whole area there. See what I mean? That's why I was wondering where these two existing pole barns are right now, because one of them might be quite uh, right on that line. I don't know. The, but the that, would, that, would, uh, that wouldn't bisect the, the area that we're talking about developing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just a suggestion. If we went between those buildings, I, I think, uh, or uh, even if we went between, I think, Joe Halls and those two buildings, could be. We would end up going west and then coming back east again, uh, probably to make that intersection with um, Hazelwood South on 77. Mm, I don't think so. Oh, Hazelwood South. Uh, I don't think so, Tom. But okay. We can I mean, look it can be looked at, gentlemen. There's, you know, that's a fairly steep grade going up there. I mean, when, you know, uh, you know, if we look at that, you know, I mean, you're just trying to, are you going to go from point A to B? How we route from point A to B is not tonight's discussion, or I mean, like you say, you know, that's going to be looked at. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'll offer what Tom is saying. I mean, you know, tentatively, you know, trying to, I'll just say, turn Hazelwood Drive and make it part of Commons Drive and then take a hard left and follow. That's actually the section line that lines up with Hazelwood South. You know, yes, it can be done, but there's going to be a lot more earth moving and, you know, for hill, you know, you have a hill and a little, little more involved with that route. Um, but I, I guess still depend on how they want to develop that. Uh, that. That's correct. I mean, the city has not even sat down with any property owners. So, I mean, how, you're right. Until they, you start to do that, you know, that, that, may, that may be a, a route location that is further looked at. But you got to talk to the property owners. But I, I would suggest that we, um, there's a lot of discussion as you could just go on here, speculation at this point. Maybe if we could, um, I like it. I really like this idea. You know, uh, that would serve several pressing problems. One that uh, the gentleman, what Joe, not Joe Hall, but uh, Joe, John Melberg brought up about the dangerous intersection there mm -hmm. and then we can be looking at uh that old project of trying to get that road all the way to hazelwood south and to recommend that uh, we consider that further as quickly as possible mark how if you wanted to figure out what the route should be what would what process would you recommend or to do Well, I guess the, the first process would be, I mean, we, you know, we have good LIDAR map in the contours, we have the wetland, would be to, because, um, you know, dollars are coming to it, um, you know, we would do a, a more, for, you, you would do a preliminary layout, and, and, and like, you know, and then I would say you'd probably do two options, put, you know, a little more detailed cost estimate together for those, and then, you know, and then that's something the city would work with MnDOT, property owners, um, Crow Wing County. But, and I'll tell you, I actually put up something down on paper that everybody can look at. Right. 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 So, um, but I mean, it's, it's not like you would have to go out and do a formal survey, you know, to do that. We have good enough base mapping and with the LIDARs to put a, you know, a general route and low, you know, I mean, just, just as was done, you know, back up on the wall there, Tom, 10 years ago. I mean, they, I'll just offer that, unfortunately, kind of ignored contours, but we, we wouldn't do that this time. I mean, we have that large wetland that needs to be worked with. So we should be engaging you then to come up with a one or two concept drawings showing where the road, the route could be put and then a cost estimate to those options. And then 
bring it back to probably the property owners, I would imagine. Well, it would come back to this, it would come back to this uh, committee. And then, you know, we would probably also, you know, list some, uh, you know, advantages, disadvantages, you know, all the things that would have to be considered with each route. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Mark, what route did you use on that cost estimate? The, the, the cost estimate that we used there was, you know, uh, right now was heading, Hazelwood Drive pretty much in its same direction and, you know, and then just going straight south at that, I'll, I'll call it at that uh, southwest orientation till we kind of lined up with, uh, you know, Hazelwood Drive south and then right, you know, right straight south through, you know, lining up with that intersection. No, had, the north end, I mean, was that the one that Tom was talking about? Yes. Okay. Yep. okay. I mean, we, we, we have, once you come to the south, you've got to move a little bit to the east because you've got that large wetland with all those slopes there and, um, you know, you know, that's what has to be, you know, we looked at it, you know, we just did a rough, there's, you know. There's some real, a lot of close contours there. Yep. Cause it, that, that's why in the estimate, we actually have some curb and gutter because no matter how you do this around that well end, you know, you're, um, it just, you know, there's going to be have, you know, there's going to be a bit of an urban section through there just to deal with that wetland. Fortunately, most of it will be to the north or to the west. Huh? Also, if we get to a concept drawing that you're talking about, if, if we were to able to get that, would we be able to call then maybe uh, Kevin Schmidt, you know, the gentleman that would, for the access, uh, con the right away, the right away, and just get an idea from them what they might consider to pay to contribute to try to do something like this. Well, well, could, well, could we okay. do that at the same time, maybe at once well, the concept drawing is made? Yes. Well, I mean, to Jim Holgren, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, uh, from the standpoint, the city would want to just talk to them. This is this is what we're looking at, right? And these are the potential, you know, uh, access points that be, would, could be then uh, yeah. removed, how does that match up with your 2001 management study and give right. us your first feedback on that. Yeah, so that sounds like that's the steps that we'd have to take, at least to move forward, get the concept drawing, get them, uh, get them about the access to see what the possibility would be that they might contribute and then go from there as far as um, if we wanna formally come up with a hire somebody then and actually make the real drawings and all that. So I guess what we would, where we would go from here at this point then is uh, I would need a proposal from Mark of what he would need to put together the concepts for us. Yep. And we would probably try to bring that back. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if the next meeting would be too soon on that, Mark. Uh, well, uh, one thing I'd want to contact is Kevin Schmidt, the right-of-way engineer, because mm -hmm. in order to do that, we kind of need an answer from in that, about their little jog in the right-of-way there. Right. Because uh, if, if, as Tom, you and I discussed on Edna Lake Road with that guardrail, because there were some certain federal dollars, you know, we couldn't touch it. And I'll just offer if some reason MnDOT cannot work with us on that right-of-way, then we're really back almost to Gill's option of taking a hard right there, going up Commons Drive and taking a hard left. So sure. I'd be, mm -hmm. so one of the first steps will be just as part of this work would be getting a hold of Kevin Schmidt and just getting some right. preliminary information from MnDOT on that. So given that I would offer, we have to work with the state and they're, you know, it's, that's gonna be, we would need a couple month period, um, you know, to, in order to really say to really bring something back for this community to look at. Okay, so we're maybe looking at- uh, You're looking at your March meeting versus, uh, excuse me, your April meeting versus your March meeting. Got it. Now we, you know, Joe or whoever's doing it would give you an update at the next meeting. Here's what, you know, here's what Kevin came back with. Here's what, you know, okay. what we're learning. So, I mean, okay. I, I would offer, you know, whether it's a, uh, maybe a couple of first ideas to get some feedback from this group on that at your next meeting and then, and then go forward, uh, you know, at, for your a little more formal than at your April meeting. Okay. Sure. Um, once we get uh, concept drawings, I guess what we could do, 
uh, to try to shorten up the period as Mark is suggesting is um, <clears throat> I would probably try to send out invitations to those property owners or make them aware of mm -hmm. the meeting that yeah. we're going to talk about that at and, and we would go from there. Um, I'm just looking at, I had made a list of a few uh, questions I had or thoughts I would had and I think a lot of what I have less left to talk about would have to come after we had uh, concepts uh, in mm -hmm. hand to talk about. Yeah, so, I, I would agree. I mean, yep, best to actually put something down on paper and then because that raises a lot of good questions. Sure. Yeah. Yep. So there's, we have to move something on this? Or? No, actually, I think what'll happen is um, we'll get some, we'll get an update next month from probably Joe and, uh, and then we'll look to our April meeting to get something together for concepts. And then we'll discuss those concepts at the April meeting is where we'll go from here. Um, unless somebody else has another thought or question or. And as Tom said, what I would need to do is put together a, a brief scope of services and a cost that would need to go to the council meeting here. Yeah. We, we, we'd get that into, uh, you know, into the city for their, your council packet here in February. Yes. Yep. That would work. Yeah, we get that approved in February, and then we have a couple of weeks to start get some preliminary information going on that. Uh, for, you know, for you know, does planning and zoning have to be in on this at all? I don't know that they would have to be yet. I think once we have our concept drawings, we could probably pull them in at that time. Okay. I mean, right now we would be. Uh, yeah, confusing a lot of people, I think, without a, a more yeah, solid. Try to come up with a good plan first, and then take it to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah let me just. I'll, I'm going to pull your zoning map out right here. <laughs> <laughs> and all that property is highway business. In other words, anything you know, it goes all the way over to the Grand View Golf Course. All highway business, so it's not like you're putting a road through. Uh, mixed zoning districts. Okay, good. All good. High, so, from the standpoint, like I say, if we were we building really, a road down through, and, you know, highway commercial and you know, rural residential or something, right? But it's it, you know, your uh, zoning districts, your highway commercial, all the way over to the golf course. Okay, good. All right, I think we're kind of wrapped up with that. Anybody else have any quick questions before or comments before we move on? We're going to hear from Tom McCauley. Uh, yeah, actually, this would be a good time. Um, uh, Tom, you want to inter introduce yourself and maybe tell uh, the committee a little about a little bit about yourself? Sure. Am, am I? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, All right. we can. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Um, yeah. So I, uh, you saw the application. I think you included that, Tom, didn't you? In the yes, I did. Yep. Yeah. So that, that's just a little bit of background. Um, I, I have 20 some years uh, working for the city of New Ulm, uh, just as a generalist, uh, assistant city manager. And uh, we just recently had moved up to Nisswa uh, in 2016, uh, towards the end of the year. And just uh, interested in, uh, you know, seeing if, if I can uh, maybe pitch in and, 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 you know, take part in your uh, public works discussions up here. So I had talked to Mark this, this previous summer when he was uh, going around and talking to folks and he, he kind of planted the seed and uh, of, of uh, looking at this committee to, to work um, on it. So I, I gave it some thought and I, I filled out the application and, and I thought I would just tune into a, uh, a meeting or two and and see if, if this is something that uh, you know the, the business that that I could be of, of help with so that's kind of it I, I just uh, 20 some years of municipal experience and and just an interest in uh, and pitching in and and being a part of the community going forward very good um... Well, Mark and I did interview Tom a little bit uh, um for consideration, uh, it would be uh, part of the process. Now we'd make a recommendation to the council to appoint Tom to the committee. Um, I, I believe Mark and I agree that that should happen. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody have any questions? Uh, Dill, Peter? Tom, have you ever figured out a way to speed up the government process? <laughs> <laughs> speed it up? Yeah. Well, overcome the bureaucracy. Well, that's kind of a, a two edged sword, you know, Peter. You know, if you don't want to speed it up too much, you might not like the results. <laughs> it's been my experience anyway. I'm not sure I like them too much with the pace we operate at. So yeah, it's uh, frustrating, but I understand it. It's a. This is a. I mean, just just this Hazelwood Drive extension. That's a pretty complicated uh, process that you're that you're looking at. You know, getting into. Yeah, state, county, city, for one. Yeah, That's yeah. Amazing. Property owners. You sounds like you've been there. Been there, done yeah. that. Sure. Okay. And the big question: Who pays for it? Well, that's what we're working on. Uh, uh, Tom's all excited now. He thinks he heard about a freebie earlier. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Well, right. I, I hope. I, do you have to sit through another one of our meetings before? whether you want to join the team or you no, I, I, I think you can you can uh, i'm interested and you can go ahead and and you know decide amongst yourself if if you think that uh that you want me on board well i support it i like having company yeah definitely we had a good uh interview as well and i think uh tom uh the philosophy and the way he thinks and will work very well with this group I agree. Mm -hmm. um, as long Tom, as you, re you realize you're taking Mark's place. You, you voted for Mark. He got elected. Now <laughs> you into the job. That's right. I, I think, still, are you still one short on this committee then? Yeah, we would have room, I believe, for one more. Mm -hmm. um, we have one potential candidate that I haven't gotten an application from yet uh, or asked. But I think we may have one more that might be interested. But if somebody has someone in mind that might be a good fit on our uh, committee here or is interested, uh, you know, please have them shoot us an application. Um, you know, they're, they're, there's, there's no such thing as too much interest, I guess. Uh, be nice to uh, have to turn uh, somebody Tom, away. <laughs> Tom, do you have somebody in mind? Um, I do. Uh, I don't want to mention it uh, in case he's not interested. Uh, Let me ask Tom, Tom McCauley, did you have somebody in mind? Uh, not at this point, Peter, no. Okay. I thought maybe you had a neighbor that, that uh, Mark Goodsinger arm twisted when he went down your street or something. <laughs> That'll be one thing. If Tom joins our committee, we're going to have to figure out nicknames or something. Cause, yeah. Uh, it'd be hard to know who... Between Tom's and Mark's, we'd have kind of, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh -huh. We can call you Junior, Tom. <laughs> we'll, we'll call him Marcy. He's got a Marcy yeah. iPad. Oh, I got to change that, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think with that, we'll make, uh, unless anybody has an objection, uh, we'll make a recommendation to the city council to appoint Tom. Um, and then ask him to attend the meeting starting next month if that works. Super. Very good. And Tom, you can, you can be out of state to, and attend these meetings. We're going to be Zooming for a while, huh? Yeah. Fortunately. I guess so. I'm in Arizona, and that's, I guess, the worst state in the okay. U.S. And uh, sounds like it's on for a while out here. Okay. So come and join us out here. Stay warm. What part of Arizona, Peter? We're, we're in Phoenix. Okay. We don't want you bringing that back here either, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, the next item I have is uh, Bay Colony. We have a duplex lift station down there that uh, I have an estimate um, here to rebuild. Um, We've had quite a bit of problems with that lift station over the years. It's, it's currently a single phase uh, electric power and electric pump can manipulate that to make that a three phase, which uh, 
I guess in the, sh the easiest way to explain that is it would allow the pumps to start up faster and with more force um, and a higher quality pump we would try to install with that um, to avoid some of the plugging issues that we've had down there and some reliability issues. Uh, we've had um, some electrical issues over the years with it. It's been a source of many call outs. So we're hoping to um, eliminate that. Um, if you notice the uh, quote is unchanged from what I gave you, I checked on that uh, to make sure that it hasn't changed with time. Uh, the quote had kind of gotten old, it's from July. Um, but Mike checked on that yesterday, our sewer operator and the quote is still good. Um, and the budget that that would be pulled from is uh, inside of our sewer enterprise fund. We have a lift station improvement fund. Um, there are there is enough money in there to do this project. Um, we are going to try to uh, do a lift station inventory here soon uh, to try to identify these a little sooner, and so we can do a little more planning. But I do think this is uh, urgent enough that we sh should go ahead with it and um, try to get this work done. Um, it, it would definitely uh, make our system more reliable and is worth it. So. I guess what I'm looking for is a recommendation from the committee to the city council to uh, proceed uh, with this project. Um, if there's any questions or comments on that, uh, entertain them now. What's the cost estimate on that? Uh, 22,185. And on top of that, um, that's not providing the actual electrical connection that would come from, um, um, oh shoot, I forgot the electrician's name, I apologize. Um, Holden, Holden Electric, uh, we'd be looking at about $2,500 to do the electrical connection. So you'd be looking at a total of right around 25,000 to do the project. So it's basically a new uh, control panel, three phase. New th new three phase control panel, two new pumps, guide rails. New pumps uh, too. Yes. Oh really? Yes. Yeah, this is one of the smaller lift stations, right? That's yeah, why the it, price is what you, it is. I don't is. know if you're familiar with the Bay Colony Resort. Um, it's right. Uh, oh shoot, we're um, trying to figure out. I don't know. If, does anybody not know where Bay Colony is? Okay. Well, anyway, it, it would serve approximately, what is there, six or eight um, resort units down there. Does that come out of your, your uh, uh, planned, uh, um, planned replacement program? Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. You have the money there, funding? We do. I support it. Well, I make a motion. Oh, go ahead. You got to say something, Peter. No, I said I, this is Peter. I support it. It's fine. I'll make a motion. Okay. But Gil, it sounds like you're ready to do a motion. Yeah, I make a motion that uh, Tom, you go ahead and initiate the project, or have the council initiate the project. Yeah, I don't know exactly how you want to say that. Uh, that yeah, I think just a recommendation of the city council to uh, proceed with the project as as uh, quoted here. Uh, they are familiar with it already. Then I take it. Yeah, actually, Electric Pump has been maintaining all of our lift stations for a number of years, so they're familiar with some of the problems we've had down there for sure. Okay, I second that then. For now, okay. we have a a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We'll make the recommendation. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, our last, um, well, I guess not quite our last, but our last new business item is changing our meeting date. Um, what, as staff, what we're looking at is trying to put some space between our meeting and the planning commission meeting, which would have been last night. Uh, we'd like to be a week before that because we do tend to make recommendations to the planning commission a lot of the time. Uh, we feel that by adding a week between our meeting and theirs, 
they would give time uh, after this meeting for me to put together any reports or information that come from here to give to the planning commission. And it also gives us another week to put any, any uh, recommendations to the city council together too. Um, it would be the same night, same time, just uh, it would be the, instead of the first Wednesday of the month, it'd be the last Wednesday of the month. Any... Um, does it work on the opposite too? Does planning often give anything to us? They can, it just doesn't seem like it, it usually happens. works that it usually way. Is the this usually way. we're making comments on um, projects that they have going. Okay. Yeah. Any any concerns or anybody have conflicts with that that uh, last Wednesday of the month? I, I did not. Uh, I, I'm asking in general. Anybody in the room have any? No. No problem here. Okay. With that, I guess I would be looking for somebody to make a motion that we would change the date to the so last moved. Wednesday of the month. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? How does it work with uh, uh, Mark, the engineer? Is it going to work for him? Yeah, the last week of the month is actually one of the best. So is that when that would fall on the last week? Okay. That would be on the on the last Wednesday of the month. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. So we'll be at the end of this month. We'll have another meeting then. Yes, we would. Okay. Good. Well, hey, two, yes. Two meetings in one month. Oh. <laughs> I, you think it could be determined? I, you know what, Peter? I'll leave that to be determined. I've had further advice on that. <laughs> I'll let you know. Yeah, Thank Mark, you. Mark, are you the official representative now then of the council? Uh, yes, I am. Good. So you'll still be on the committee? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I don't know if you know, Dill, John is in the room too. If you, you know, if you feel like harassing him a little bit, feel free. I wonder, what, I wonder what happened to him. <laughs> Who's John? <laughs> John just can't let go, you know. So, hi, John. It's nice to know you're in the room. Well, John must have a terrible time not saying anything. <laughs> Are you there, John? <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, I guess uh, we're on item seven. Um, Mark, do you have any updates on any of the projects we have going or yep. about to go? Yep, well, just generally the uh, wastewater treatment plant, uh, you know, continues. So uh, actually the three new aeration blowers showed up this week. So they're sitting inside the new building. I mean, yet to be plumbed up and everything, but Eagle's uh, putting the new siding on the building. Uh, they had to reorder it because it came in too short the first time, but that'll, but that'll actually wrap up in the nice cold weather the next couple of days. Um, and then I say the you know the uh, pond construction is you know is on hold until the weather warms up in April. And we had our monthly uh, uh, construction progress meeting Thursday of last week. Um, I set the minutes out for that here uh, for that. But uh, and right now the contractor is on schedule. Uh, they actually uh, they've had a very good winter for working. They actually went through and did all fourteen uh, valve vaults for the existing irrigation system. So they actually got that work. You know, that, that work will be finished this week. And you know, that was on their schedule to do next summer. So, uh, you know, the weather's been very favorable for them. So they're, they're ahead. And so let me say, and right now, uh, no major, uh, as far as we do, I guess, uh, you know, more for the council, I guess uh, we are setting up a meeting uh, with a dime industrial for the, uh, some, you know, uh, equipment, wash equipment that'll go in the wash bay area. You know, to allow you know all city departments, you know, to use that. Uh, so that'll be coming up. Uh, you know, we have a meeting here scheduled next week for that. And then, uh, so if you, is there, are there any questions on the wastewater plant? 
What's the completion date on that, Mark? Well, the, the completion date, uh, there's a milestone uh, around August 1st year of 2020, we'll have cell four in operation. And then the completion date is the end of October, October 31st to have, you know, then all the, you know, all the irrigation system operational. Of 21. Of, of 21, yes. Our final completion, Sharman Drive paved. All the, you know, there's a mile and a half of fence up, but, you know, that's all that, you know, it'll all be done, uh, you know, by the end of October. So, and they say so far everything's went well, so uh, it'd be great to the contractor would have her all wrapped up sometime around Labor Day. Yeah. But we'll, we'll wait and see. So far, staff, say that, what we've seen has been fantastic with their work. Uh, they have an excellent foreman on site and uh, it's been a pleasure to work with. Yeah, so. yeah, thank you. I mean, Scott, their foreman for Eagle, uh, it always helps in personalities mesh and him and Mike Wagner talk several times a week, if not every day. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they, like I say, the, the actual control gate showed up today. So, you know, that's one of the coordination items that uh, uh, staff, will, you know, Mike and his crew will be working with Eagles. They install those gates and we can get the temporary one then out of for cell two. But yeah, so thank you, Tom. Like I say, the, uh, you, you know, the Eagle foreman uh, runs a tight ship and both these communicates good with city staff, which is always good. Mm -hmm. Did you say they're going to pave the road into there? Yeah, it's part of the project. Uh, Charmin Drive is uh, receiving a bituminous surfacing. The whole um, road from the corner? Well, from Lower Royal Lake Road, yeah. it'll be paved then up to the uh, current entrance, the gate there that goes into the street department. Yeah. Great, great. We're trying to eliminate the last of our gravel roads. We have, um, it's less than a mile, I believe now, of gravel road left in the city. And we spend a lot of money maintaining gravel roads and we're poorly equipped to do that. So um, not a lot of advantage to having a gravel road in this one anymore. Especially if we move the garbage out there eventually. Yeah. You know, that, you know, be, be nice having it paved. Yeah. All right. And then uh, lift station three is also, you know, we'll be uh, coming up here in a, about another uh, month and a half. So uh, we haven't heard anything else from Aspen Construction that, uh, I mean, I know the pumps are sitting up in Hackensack and I would assume Automatic Systems is, uh, should have a control panel sitting up there shortly. So uh, Lift Station 3 will come back on the radar here this um, about mid-March. Sounds good. Is the city signed off on uh, Grandview's uh, construction project up there? That we, I can't think of the name of it. North, North Pine? North Pines. North Pines. Well, the, the final plat's been you know, recommended to the council. Um, so they're, uh, you know, West with their engineer, also Peter has to come back with a few items, you know, their final sewer uh, plans. I mean, they're 98% done, but we, we haven't got a final one yet because the specs tracer wire and there's a lot of different things that we'll just make sure they have in place before they start construction, uh, you know, this summer sometime. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mark? Thanks, Mark. Uh, last item, any committee member concerns, questions, comments on anything? I guess with that, um, uh, just a couple FYI items I had at the end here. Uh, the Wolf Chase uh, Streetlight Project, I uh, contacted uh, Crowing Power on that. Uh, that project will be underway. There's no significant price change uh, to their estimate either. Um, they may do some preliminary work yet this winter, but they're planning uh, that, that most of that work will be completed in the spring once the road restrictions go off. Um, <clears throat> Peter, I don't know if you were still in town when this happened, but somebody cut down one of our roundabout trees. I, I read about it, and I yeah. saw in your report that um, some contractor has been kind enough to donate and it, it's just fantastic. Right. And so I just mentioning that uh, we'll be replacing that tree also once spring comes and the road restrictions are off. Let's make sure we send him a thank you letter. Absolutely. Yeah. Signed oh, by all the you. city councilmen. Yeah. Did they ever find out who did it? <laughs> Not that I know of. It's unfortunate. I, I, 
I think uh, when we replace this one, we're gonna have to put some cameras up in that intersection or something to uh, maybe allow us to hurt. catch them <laughs> next yeah. time if there is a next time. Um, and then lastly, um, I had uh, talked to Jeremy File and to uh, Bob, um, the owner of the mini golf. Uh, we had uh, one of our previous meetings, we had talked about accessing a manhole for maintenance. Uh, I think we, we're going to be able to work something out with Bob uh, to get Jeremy access on that. And uh, he's going to move that. He's got a little corner fence that kind of blocks Jeremy's access. And, and Bob says he's willing to move that a little bit to make that work. So I think we're good there. And lastly, um, I'll be putting together, as I've stated for a few months now, a survey for East and West Linden residents. Uh, we're, we're looking at doing a road resurface project through there at some point. Um, and so I'll be asking some questions about drainage and road widths and things like that, um, that I would look to get prepared and ready to go to those residents uh, by June when most of them are back. So that, that's, and then hope to get the results from them back by August. So with that, have, I don't have anything else, I guess. Have fun with that project. <laughs> yeah. That one will probably be more of a challenge than the, the Hazelwood Drive. <laughs> Do we all have to be part of the listening committee? Well, you know, I, if you're there, that'd be great. <laughs> I won't say anything past that. Uh, with, I guess, unless anybody else has anything, uh, I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Second. Tom, we welcome you. Thank you. I look forward to working with you guys. Yeah, me too. All right. Stand adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night.